And today, the Obama Presidential Center announced that a number of its spaces will be named for historic human and civil rights figures like Holocaust survivor and author Elie Wiesel and pioneering black astronaut Mae Jemison. But as that center marches closer to its opening date, one neighboring community has some concerns about the center's impact on longtime residents. We're talking about the South Shore community, just south of Jackson Park along Lake Michigan, which is also a point of concern for residents. It's tonight's stop on our In Your Neighborhood series where Brandis Friedman joins us now. Brandis, let's start with the lakefront and the concerns people have there. Yeah, Paris. In short, it's erosion. Residents say that high lake levels have caused uh, beaches to shrink and damage to infrastructure. So about two years ago, some neighbors here formed the Southside Lakefront Erosion Task Force to address this issue. But of course, over the summer, their efforts really ramped up after that tragic condominium collapse in Surfside, Florida over the summer. Now, Sharon Lewis, she lives here in South Shore. She's lived here since the 1960s, and her current building has a bird's eye view of Lake Michigan a defining part of this community. The lake, of course, makes it special. Uh, the South Shore Cultural Center, I think, is the jewel of the park district. Uh, and then the people. They're wonderful people here, committed people, willing to get involved. Uh, and I have to say, if we're involved, our represent representatives are involved as well. So we are working well with our public officials and hoping to get positive outcomes. But in recent years, high lake levels and extreme winter storms have caused streets and sewers to flood and caused damage again to lakefront properties. Lewis is part of that Southside Lakefront Erosion Task Force that we mentioned, which wants greater protections for 73rd Street and 73rd Place. They're both getting, still getting a lot of damage from the lake force storms. That's a big issue for public safety and uh, infrastructure. The street that we're on right now, 73rd Street, it used to be about three or four feet lower. So this has been built up. And what we see are sinkholes appearing when these big storms occur. And the task force is proposing a breakwater at 73rd Street and 73rd Place to eliminate those sinkholes and further flooding. It's estimated to cost about $5 million. They hope to have it completed around 2022-23. And as we mentioned, of course, the effect of the coming Obama Presidential Center, it's another source of concern. Now, the uh, Community Benefits Agreement Coalition, also known as the CBA, they've been concerned about it since the library was announced uh, to be going to Jackson Park. Organizer Dixon Romeo says that while they are proud of the former president and his ties to this community, activists already fear that they're seeing residential displacement. We almost say, well, you know, Hey, Ms. Johnson, I know you've been living here 30 years. You've paid your rent every month. You're a great tenant, but I can do nothing to this unit. I can do nothing to this unit. I can increase the price by 20, 30, 40 percent and get someone else in there. And so, you know, that's what folks will do if there aren't certain laws and protections put in place like the ones we've advanced that try and help sure that renters can stay in the neighborhood, that the city has programs for the renters to be able to become homeowners and that we have protections for our homeowners. Dixon says the coalition's made a number of requests to aldermen in the area to protect longtime residents, ranging from establishing a loan fund for purchases and rehabilitations of vacant homes and buildings to making sure there's ample affordable housing set aside for lower income renters. But he also says some of their demands won't cost the city anything, like granting existing longtime residents the right to return. Now, all of that said, Fifth Ward Alderperson Leslie Harrison says that she has not received these demands from the CBA, that instead she has been working with the South Shore Community Compact. That's a group of about 30 organizations in this community. And of course, they plan on making public what it is they would like to see that's happening soon. Of course, for some, there is plenty of excitement about the Obama Center coming in nearby. We spoke with the owner of Majani. It is a soul food vegan restaurant about two blocks from where we're standing right now. We first met them uh, last year at the beginning of the pandemic um, on the second day of our COVID Across Chicago series at the beginning of the pandemic. Now, Chef uh, Sadakia Emanuel says it presents an opportunity for his business. He has had the chance to cater uh, the Obama summits and meet the former president and first lady. He believes a rising tide lifts all boats, thinking that the center could mean a positive transformation for a business like his. 
In fact, his business was closed today because of staffing shortages, something restaurants are experiencing across the city during this phase of the pandemic. He came in just to meet with us and happened to catch a phone call about a catering order for tomorrow, but he says it's a problem that started at the beginning of this year and intensified over the summer. Like rolling blackouts kind of situation where we had to close one restaurant to bring that staff to another restaurant. So, um, you know, we, we managed the best we could, but, you know, we've always tried to open at 11 o'clock regardless. And we just had to let go of that and be like, you know what, today we cannot. We just have to go with what's, what was presented to us. Chef Emanuel says he's also experienced his share of supply chain issues, uh, making adjustments if something can't be delivered on time or delivered at all. Now, coming up, we're going to hear from another community group that is working on reimagining the community of South Shore. We're also going to hear from the state representative from this area to talk a little bit more about those rising lake levels and what can be done to protect residents and their homes. But for now, Paris, back to you. Hey, Paris, hope uh, Chef Emanuel gets some staff back in there. Love Majani. It's a great place. Thanks so much.